9-5, we're going to take a look at the period change in trigonometric graphs. So we're going to review the different paragraphs for sine and cosine. Those are the ones we examined yesterday. We're going to review amplitude, and then we're going to understand the period of a trig graph. Now from yesterday, we established, and I said, starting here all the way to here is our parent function. And I said the important values that we need to remember are 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. Those are the important values. Okay, and then the same thing goes for sine. It starts here and goes all the way to here. And we say that that is one cycle because the moment that we reach this point, it repeats itself. And so every time it goes through and it repeats itself, we call that you know, a cycle. So you can have multiple cycles. So in this instance, what we see here is a graph with two cycles. Starts back to where it started, back to where it started. So there's two cycles there. And so we're going to use that idea of a, uh, the cycle here very shortly. But we need to have these parent graphs memorized. If we have these parent graphs memorized, the rest is fairly easy. We just have to have those parent graphs memorized. So in my mind, when I think cosine, I think starts at the amplitude, crosses, goes below, crosses, back up at the amplitude. And then these values that we find here are those special values. So 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, 2 pi. Same thing with sine. Sine, my brain has that image. right? And then I can do that. So we have to have those parent graphs memorized. Now we were talking about the amplitude, and we said that the amplitude is essentially the vertical and stretching, the vertical stretching or shrinking of the function. And so that a that's in front of our function will either stretch the graph or shrink shrink the graph by that factor. And so if we normally had you know it being the distance of one because of the three, now the distance from the center line to the highest point on the graph or the lowest point on the graph. We call that the amplitude. And so that distance is 3, and so that's why my amplitude is 3. Your amplitude is never negative. It is always positive. Absolute value. So now we're going to examine the horizontal stretching and shrinking. So we did vertical. Now we're going to do the horizontal stretching and shrinking. And so we're going to examine the value that we can multiply our function by. Now, we call this horizontal shrinking the period change. So a period is the number of radians or degrees it takes for a function to complete one full cycle of revolution. So going back to that parent graph, because the distance from here all the way back to here is 2 pi, I can say that my uh, period is going to be 2 pi because the distance 0 to 2 pi, that's how long it takes for my function to start repeating itself. So one full cycle. That distance, horizontally, that's 2 pi. And so that's going to be the period. Now it's going to change. And so the way that we can calculate the new period is we use this formula here, 2 pi over b. Now I know it's not blue, but we're going to get this down. We want to get this down. Come on, highlighter. Let's calculate the period. 2 pi over b. That's something that we need to know. New period, 2 pi over b. So if I had cosine of 2 theta, that's our parent graph. That's what it normally looks like. But because of that 2, it shrinks. The shape is the same, but it shrinks. If I did 2 pi over b, which is 2, that cancels out, and so I get pi. The math is shown there. So that means the distance now that it takes for me to complete a new cycle shrunk by a factor of 2. So I can now get twice as many cycles in there in that same distance. Now if you so notice, like look at it right now, notice that the shape is the same. What has changed are these values. So if 
all we do is find what those new values are. Easy peasy. We can do this. So that's going to be the goal. How do we find the new values? We plot in the shape. That's all we need to do. Let's take a look at the same thing with sine. So one half, so if I had two pi over one half, well it flips and so that becomes four pi. And so in that same cycle, you're only gonna be able to graph on that same distance of eight pi instead of being able to do one, two, three, it looks like about four cycles, right? You can only fit two now. So let's sketch it. So we're gonna sketch the following for one full rotation five sine of three theta. So I need to know the parent graph because it's sine in my head I need to be thinking starts here goes up crosses goes below crosses. Okay that's my parent graph. My amplitude that's five. So my amplitude is going to be five. So I know the distance from that center line all the way up and all the way down that's going to be five. Now the other thing that I need to do is I need to find that, those values that are in the box. Because of the period change, those values are not zero, pi halves, pi, three pi halves, and two pi anymore. So I need to find what those new values are. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the, whatever's the inside of your function here, so in this case, three theta. We're gonna take that three theta and we're gonna put that between zero and two pi. We're basically cr almost creating an equation, right? We're almost creating an equation here. We're putting it between zero and two pi. Now by doing this, we're gonna find basically what our new box is. Now we just get theta by itself. So if I get theta by itself, I get zero is less than theta, which is less than two pi thirds. This value is where it starts this is values where it ends. So this right here basically represents my new value box. So that's zero and that's two pi thirds. So now we just need to find what's in the middle of these, right? What's in between? Well, this right here is directly in the middle. Well, to find the middle of something, we use the midpoint formula. You add the two values together, divide by two. So 0 plus 2 pi thirds divide by 2. So that's going to give me 2 pi thirds over 2. Remember when I said we have fractions and you skip? Those are going to cancel out. So you get pi thirds. So now add these. So this right here is now the middle of these two. So 0 plus pi thirds all over 2. Okay, well dividing a third by two, that's gonna give me a sixth. And then now adding these two together and dividing by two, that's gonna give me pi thirds plus two pi thirds all over two. That's for here, I'm just running out of space, sorry. So I get three pi thirds over two, that's gonna give me three pi over six, or pi halves. Now I'm gonna leave it as three pi over six here for a second, and you're gonna see why. So I have my values. So now, if you notice, this is essentially broken up into six. One pi six, or zero, sorry, zero pi six, one pi six. This was two pi six before I simplified it. Three pi six, four pi six. And so you can go through and we can go ahead and label it. Now, these are the reduced values, right? This would reduce into pi halves, right? The threes would cancel out. We could do that. But it's easier if you wanted to to start to say, hey, look it, everything's broken into six. Let's break it into six. Zero, one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six. And you can label it that way. And so now that I have this, all I need to do is start graphing everything. So we said that it's sine, my parent graph starts at the center line. Boop. My next value, I go up to the amplitude. Boop. My next value. I go back to the center line. Boop. The next value goes below, and the next value is back at the center line. And so now, 
that I have this, right? I've created the value box, finding the missed pieces here. Now I can go through and I can sketch the graph. So these are just the X values in which I plot the pattern of my parent graph. So what I did here essentially is I just looked at the function and I said, hey, what's my parent graph? What's my amplitude? What's a period that I'm gonna have to worry about? And then I took whatever the inside of my function is, in this case it's three theta, and I put that between zero and two pi. It will always be zero and two pi for sine and cosine. And you're like, whoa, 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 tangent. You're right, tangent's gonna be a little different. But it's always between zero and two pi when it comes to uh, sine and cosine. Now the reason it's zero and two pi is because where did it originally start? Started at zero, ended at two pi. Originally started, originally ended. And then we transformed it to this is where it starts new. This is where it, the new ending is. And then to find the middle values, just the midpoint formula, add the ends, divide by two, added the ends, divide by two, added the ends, divided by two, and I did the math there. And then you can take those values and you can put them on your number line. Let's look at one more. So cosine. So I need to determine the parent graph. So immediately my brain should be like, this is my cosine starts up at the amplitude, crosses, goes below, crosses, goes back up, but there's a negative. If you notice that negative there, that means it's going to flip. So that, right, it means a reflection. So everything re switch places basically, right? So it's gonna be the red there. Now my amplitude is four, it's always positive. So my amplitude is four. So a period, if I did two pi over one third, that gives me six pi. And so now I need to take that value. So I have zero, the theta over three, right? Because this is the inside of my function. You put that between zero and two pi. Get theta by itself. So I'm gonna multiply everything by three. So I'm gonna get zero is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to six pi. That is my start and end value on the value box. So zero and six pi. So add the ends, divide by two. Add the ends, divide by two. So zero plus three pi halves, that gives me three pi halves. Add the ends, divide by two, that gives me nine pi over two. Now for consistency, right, I could rewrite these all into halves so it looks like everything's counting by three pi halves because these will the distance between these are always the same so that means that this is six pi halves nine pi halves and then 12 pi halves so when we go to label that i could do the reduced form or if i wanted to say zero three pi halves six pi halves nine pi halves 12 pi halves i can do that as well so there are my values being labeled. Now all I need to do is just draw in my function. We said it starts below because of the reflection, then it crosses, then it goes above, crosses, goes back below. And then there's my graph. That is one full rotation.